everyone. I'm James Wesley. Seth Rudetsky. And our dog saw a raccoon. We have a raccoon in the oh backyard. my gosh. Sorry. It was bound to happen. No, my, uh, this raccoon, wow. it keeps coming out of this hollow. Anyway, this is oh, Stars in the House. Stars in the House is an entertainment show that we do twice a day. We began it right when Broadway shut down. And we've been doing it twice a day ever since. We're up to show maybe 115 at this point. We do it basically to bring people together around the world so that they feel connected because everyone's isolating so much. And we also do it to raise money for the Actors Fund. So you can just watch and enjoy, or you can donate some money to the Actors Fund. $5 is the minimum. It can't be in Vulcan money. <laughs> Star Trek humor. Hey, are uh, you going to okay. anybody? No, that's right. Wow, I laughing. leave for I 30 laugh. seconds to go get the dog. I got to laugh out of Ro Robbie. Roxanne is glaring. Hi, Roxanne. Hey, anyway, so here's the deal. You got to start. <laughs> yeah. Okay. You got to not bang this okay. table set. So, All right. But I'm so, so excited. All I'm hearing is banging over here. The point is, you go to starsinthehouse.com <sighs> to donate. The money goes to the Actors Fund, and the Actors Fund is a misnomer. And the misnomer is a fancy word, meaning it's not just for actors. It is for what, James? It is for any professional in the performing arts. It is for people that are not just actors, but people that are costume designers, ushers, concessionaires, voice teachers, dance teachers, people that are all over the country. It is basically a human services organization that is there now for people in time of need, and which basically means everyone in the performing arts is out of work. Yeah. So, and here's a, a, a great letter I wanna read. I know we have so many fans and new and new people that are watching tonight, but this letter I'm gonna read to the Actors Fund this is a from perfect- someone that got money. But you go to the Actors perfect Fund- Perfect example. You say, I can't pay my health insurance, I can't pay my rent, I can't pay my electric bill. They say, how much is it? And they hand you the money. I mean, they're an amazing organization. Right, I've been around for, my gosh, 100, over 125 years. Oh my gosh. Okay. I just wanted to say thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for relieving the stress that I had about being able to pay rent this month. The Actors Fund is a godsend. I'm so grateful. I really appreciate all of your help during these challenging times in the world. And I pray that all is well with you and all of your loved ones. Have a great weekend with best wishes for continued success. That's what we're talking about, paying rent, paying health insurance premiums, literally paying for food, groceries. Utilities. We constantly keep hearing things for right. paying for my groceries. And by the way, the people that do the amazing makeup on all the Star Trek, all the crazy <laughs> base stuff that people have to do, everyone is out of work. And people live check to check. Many people in the arts most, live check most to check. People, most people in the arts live check to check. Yeah. And those checks aren't coming. So um, anyway, yeah. as soon as you make the donation all at right. starsinthehouse.com, forward, you're gonna get a receipt for the donation at Stars in the House 2020 at Gmail. And then one of these amazing Star Trek people will read it out loud. I already have donations already that oh, I'm yeah. gonna send. So some people who follow Stars in the House, they knew to do it in they advance. Knew, they knew to do it in advance because before eight o'clock Eastern, we were already getting a lot of donation receipts emailed to us yep. because they knew the trick they to, wanted get, their names to get them in early and they wanted their names read by a cast member yes, of Star Trek Voyager. Um, speaking of, of Star Trek Voyager, because that's all we're gonna talk about today. Um, we There's actually, I don't know how many of the cast members know this, but there's actually, not surprisingly really, yeah. a college course being taught at DePaul University by Brian Maj, and the entire class is watching right now. It's part of their course work to watch the show. <laughs> and um, we wanted to give a shout out to them um, for, for watching. It's this course title, um, maybe uh, Brian Maj will teach it again in the fall, is called Star Trek Voyager Ethics and the Enlightenment. That's the name of the course. And so all of the, um, actually, let's see right here, because we have a picture, because they had their, they had their course meet uh, today. Where is it? So, oh, right here. There they all are. Uh, wow. That's the class. I don't know what happened. <laughs> something happened to their hands, unfortunately. Uh, <laughs> so they're so they're joining us. So and speaking of the money for the actress fund, we are now we have reached just our show alone. Now there's a lot of different sources of people giving to the actress fund, but for this, but for this particular but for show, this particular show and with the give like five, ten, twenty, thirty dollars. That's right. The average donation, I'm gonna guess, is like thirty bucks. We've, ra we've raised on this show over $322,000. Yay, that's today's total. So yes. hopefully we can bring it up with the Trek fans. Yes, um, I have okay. no doubt about so it. So I'm gonna play the theme of okay, the piano. But hold on, Seth, before we, get, before we do this, yes. we, have to re we have to tell everyone, not not everyone can be yes. on the screen at the same time. Yeah, so for, before you're panicking, you're like, oh my God, where is so-and-so? The second half of the show, will have, we can only get five people on the screen at one time. Because unlike maybe other reunions you've seen, which is fantastic 
they're not live. We're, yeah, we're if you live. see all these different people and it's Zoom, this isn't Zoom. This is called StreamYard, which now enables us to be able to stream it out to Twitter and Facebook and YouTube and for it to be seen by as many people as possible. And that way we can that way we can react to questions like as That's you actually right. ask them. Oh wow, I didn't even know there was an emoji for that. How cool is that? <laughs> of course but we, is. we can react, so we can react. And let me tell you, we've life. got old school, but we've got a lot of questions that have come in on on Instagram and emails and all of that. So um, there we go. Oh, look, Brian, um, right there, the teacher. Hello to oh, my students. Oh, so kind. Hi. Yay. Yes. Um, okay. Yeah, so we're going to start bringing people on. All right. Let me make sure I've got the right order here. All right, so Seth is going to play. I'm not company. <laughs> here we go. <laughs> live musical accompaniment here. All right. First up, Garrett Wayne. Hi, Garrett. Hey, how are you? Robbie McNeil. Hey, Robbie. Roxanne Dawson. Hi, Hi Roxanne. Oh. Hi, Roxanne. Hi, I don't see Robert Beltran, <laughs> but we're gonna. How about Bob Picardo? We're gonna bring you on right now, Bob. Bob Picardo. Yes. There's and Kate Bob. Mulgrew. Hello, Hi, everybody. Hi. 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 Did that sound just like the full orchestra introduction? Of totally show? did, Seth. It was amazing. I, I couldn't <laughs> tell the difference. I still got it. <laughs> so first of all, is this one of those things where you guys are constantly having Zooms and chatting, or is this the first time we've seen each other in a while? We saw each other on that fatal boat. Most <laughs> of you, I, I wasn't there, And we Katie. got off. We got oh, off. Yes. We, we only won, sweetheart. I know. I missed the party. Oh, yeah. Seth, they had, a, they had a cruise in March right before the, the pandemic blew up. The first week of March. They were all on a cruise, but I couldn't go. So it was fun. I haven't seen. But I got I terribly sick. Didn't you get sick, anybody? Roxanne? Didn't you get sick? No. <laughs> <laughs> I was sitting very close to you for a very long time. <laughs> it it didn't work, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> okay, better now. Yeah. Garrett, I'm going to text you donations right now. So keep talking, Wait, Garrett. Me. I'm going I'm to text you right now as we speak. Oh okay. my gosh. Okay, so like I said, we've gotten so many we've gotten so many questions. I don't know where to start, but I'm gonna just I'm gonna just dive in here, okay? If, if you don't mind. And then the thing is about this platform is we can't as much as we may want to all join in at the same time. You have to almost like not raise your hand like you're in school, but kind of, or take a breath so that we know who's going to. Talk. Yeah, because if two people talk at the same time, the voice will cut out. But Garrett, before we begin, let's yes. talk about the donations we've got oh, already. All right. Do you want to talk? Okay. Paul from the UK, fifteen dollars. Uh, Uruka from Germany, fifty-one dollars. That's a nice, interesting number. Maxine from New York, twenty-five dollars. Michael from New York, twenty-five dollars. Jean-Francois from Canada, ten dollars. Sherry from Oregon, twenty-eight dollars. Don from Ontario, fifty-one dollars. Marina from New Jersey, one hundred and three dollars. Thank you, Marina. Jason and Etai from Pennsylvania, twenty-three dollars. Voyager super fans, there you go. Excellent. Yay! Yay! Well. We do have people watching all over the world. So Kate, I'm gonna, the first question is gonna be for you. It's from Steve in Australia. And he says, when I first saw Voyager and a female captain, I was absolutely hooked the moment it started. And it was about time. What did it feel like being the first woman captain? It was terrific. It was <laughs> overwhelming. It was absolutely overwhelming. I mean, I was really shot out of a cannon. As you know, I was not the first choice. Jean-Vierre Bougeot played it for about two seconds. And then she left <laughs> because it was, uh, uh, and she very bravely left. I've always been grateful to her for that. And I had about four days to collect myself. And then I started on Monday morning. So uh, it, it was, uh, it was a, a formidable undertaking. But once I got my sea legs, if you'll pardon the expression, uh, it was great. It was just Your great. trick legs. <clears throat> yeah, exactly. Were you a Star Trek super fan beforehand? I was a non-fan, never walked science fiction, never read science fiction, didn't know anything about science fiction. In fact, I met Patrick Stewart at a wedding reception. He won't recall this because it was low so many years ago. But I said, why is everybody making such a big deal about Patrick Stewart? Who's Patrick Stewart? Oh, that's a captain. He's the captain of the next generation. He's the captain of the what? Of the what? Yes. 
And then I said, I don't I have no idea what you're talking about. You may as well be speaking Greek. And actually, guys, it stood me in good stead because I didn't I didn't have any uh, I, I anticipated nothing short of trying to embody this character. That's it. Robbie. So raise, yay, I raised my hand. Um, <laughs> I just I have to tell Kate that, you know, uh, some of us like the people on the bridge had worked with Jean Viev, we had worked uh, on the on the bridge a bit, and there was a lot of um, uncertainty. I guess when Jean Viev left, there was a lot of uncertainty. Were we gonna? Was the show gonna get made? You know, were they gonna make make it a male captain? Maybe they couldn't find a female who could, who they felt could do this. And mm. the moment you said the first line on the bridge, we, I personally, I felt like this show's gonna work. We, we're gonna make it. Like this, now it's all together. So oh, it was, so it was very, very clear to us. Uh, yes. Who was on the bridge? That Were you all on the bridge that no, day? No, it was just I Robbie wasn't. Robbie and I. That's yeah. it. I think, was it? Maybe, maybe Tim. No. My not. memory He's... is of you all there. No, you're right. It wasn't Tim. It was, no. just, it was just you and I. That's right. No. Kate, were you the... fully clothed? <laughs> uh, <laughs> yes. Oh, that didn't start until later in the season. <laughs> yes. I get it. That's right. <laughs> No, I just remember, Kate, I just want to say everyone breathed a sigh of relief when you said engage, because the way jean Vieve Bujold said engage, she whispered it. She said, engage, and closed her eyes. And so when you came in and said it, and you were just like, engage, you kind of, you know, you you enunciated, you, and well, everyone everyone breathed a sigh of relief. So yes, it was true. Yeah, it was a French good Canadian versus an Versus Iowan. American, an <laughs> Iowan. <laughs> exactly. Bob yeah. Picardo, one yes. of the First off, we want to thank you for organizing all this, you and Kate. So thank you. He's like Julie the yes, Bob. Thank you. Thank you. Absolutely. And one yeah. of the things you said, because I see that Robert Beltran is on, is, is on deck. So I'm going to switch you out. But what did you tell me about all the different Roberts and how you uh, had to keep track? <laughs> we are, there are the, one third of the Voyager cast is named Robert. So we, <laughs> we had to. And because uh, I worked last, I got assigned Bob. So uh, 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 Robbie, Robbie uh, McNeil, Robert Duncan McNeil became Robbie and Robert Beltran stayed Robert and I got Bob, which was the only thing other than- You got that. Roberto. You got I got Roberto. Roberto from Kate only, from Kate only. <laughs> Otherwise it was either Bob or hey you. So I'm happy with Bob. <laughs> But I'll come back after Robert. Uh, comes, yeah. I'll see you guys later. All right. So we'll switch out a Bob. Can't wait. For a bye Bob. bye Roxanne. <laughs> bye Bob. Bye Bob. Bye, bye Bobby P. Bye. So. And we're going to put on, oh, sorry, Rob. Oh, Our, okay, hold on. We're going to put on Robert. Robert. Oh, hello, Robert. There he is. <laughs> Commander. <laughs> Who's a Chicote fan that uh, worked out this sequence of uh, entrances? And <laughs> I'm glad I'm one of your favorites. <laughs> How much time do we have left? How are you? Hi, everybody. How are you? You're looking well. Oh, my heart. goodness. You look great. Thank yes. you. Thank you. It's good to see all of where you. Where are you, Robert? Where are you? I, I'm at my house. I, I'm in the dining room where there's decent light. Mm -hmm. um, and um, Robert, my, it my looks dog, like you and I. You and I. Nice. My little. Nice touch. My little Maltese that my daughter begged and begged for. How is your daughter? She's great, thank you. Good. My dog is scared. She doesn't want to leave my side because uh, they left, and when when they leave, she's afraid that I'm going to leave too. So she's oh, all right. Oh. Okay, okay, Coco. Everything's good. <laughs> Get out of here before I. We have Get a really out. fun general okay. question. Basically, what did you like most about your character on Voyager? What did you like least about your character on Voyager? Roxanne, you go first. <laughs> I can do. Oh, do I have to raise my hand? Oh, no, no, you don't have to. Well, I can tell you least, least is the makeup, okay? Which was a, a two and a half hour to put on and 45 minute removal. So that was definitely my least favorite thing about it. And uh, my favorite thing about it is all of these people, which is like really cool. And the fact that we are still even talking to each other 25 years later is kind of amazing. <laughs> so yeah, uh, it's it it's really it was such an extraordinary experience. I entered Star Trek. Uh, I just got married. I left Star Trek with two kids, 
and I still had my husband and I started directing. So it was like a well major Well done you. Well done you. Yes. Great. Abby, what about you? What did you love most? What did, you love most? Excuse me. What did I love? Um, what I what I hated most was I think um Garrett Garrett and I are doing a podcast and we started re-watching the show recently. We started re-watching from the first season. Oh. And what what I realized was I really hated the way that character started. He was kind of a jerk. He was like, there was so many, the list of unlikable qualities about him. He was supposed to be this rebel, but he really was, the more I look at it, I was like, oh, what a horrible person. But um, <laughs> but what I love the most about my character was how he changed. And by the end of the series, I think he really, um, he really evolved into a very different person. And because was, was a, all because of Roxanne. All oh, because of thank Roxanne. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> I don't think you were a jerk in the beginning. Yeah, a little bit sometimes. You were a little, you know, slightly arrogant. But you were... Yes. <laughs> anyway, Robbie McNeil was always hiding that book. Weren't you always hiding I was, that book? I was always that reading. Book? You, you know, was, Seth. I adored. I, yeah. I, I used to bring a book on the on the bridge and I would read. I would just read you know, voraciously. And so sometimes I'd get lost in a book and Kate would have to wake me up. And... <laughs> you mean Robbie, Robbie the actor was reading a book all the time on the set? Yeah. Yeah. Robbie McNeil. Me. The pilot. The pilot. I thought acting, I thought acting is listening. <laughs> or, or reading or studying. <laughs> acting is studying. I thought okay. it was a fascinating tool. A fascinating acting tool. Yes. Like, <laughs> Thank you. Was it like I, Daniel? Always, I, I always like to have a little business, you know. So I thought reading <laughs> was like some, the some was like a prop. <laughs> right. Uh huh. All right, Gary. Yeah. What about you? What did you like the most? What did you like the least? I'll start with the least. Uh, least favorite would have to be the very tight and hot uniforms that we had to wear. They um, they were made to fit perfectly when you're standing up. They had these little stirrups at the bottom, but when you're sitting down on a chair, um, it pulled in all the wrong places. <laughs> so that's my least favorite. My most favorite is probably going to have to be a tie between the relationships I develop with my um, fellow actors that you see on this screen that you're going to see later. Um, and also to be part of a show that over the years, I've been at different conventions where people have come up to me and said, um, I, I was in a horrible place in my life, or maybe they were in a huge accident or something. And um, they were either suicidal or had a, a prognosis where they weren't going to survive, but watching Star Trek save their life. So that is probably what I'm most proud of um, being part of something that has saved people's lives. So. Wow, that's beautiful. Wow. Yeah. Uh, what about you, um, full Robert name? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, my, my least, well, my, my favorite thing was uh, anytime I got to say a coochie moya, I was uh, <laughs> over the top happy about that. Just <laughs> wonderful. Uh, <laughs> my least favorite thing. <laughs> How are you, Roxanne? I haven't seen you in so long. Um, I know. Robbie, good to see you. Kate, good to I see was you. just talking to Garrett what? the other day, yesterday, actually. Yeah. Um, my least favorite, oh, gosh. Um, the long hours, I think. Mm. I don't think Robbie noticed him because he was in the middle of reading a Daniel Steele book. But I think <laughs> Oh no no never Daniel Steele no no France <laughs> get back to me Kay Mulgrew what was your least and your most favorite I think oh, the most favorite is is oh is, no here we go there he goes what is it sleep <laughs> when the dead when, uh, sleep when I'm dead is that what it says sleep when I'm yeah. dead good man this good is man. Warren Warren Zevon biography a I haven't born, read it yet a born bibliophile sorry there go ahead mm. uh, it I was, think it was a the, pro the, prop the, joke. It, the most favorite is obvious because I was the captain. And what could be more gratifying than that? Not much. Uh, the first female captain was pretty, um, <clears throat> was pretty extraordinary. As I said to you earlier, it was daunting, but um, I think I was ready for that task and uh, happy to meet it with this group, all of whom I grew to, uh, to love. Uh, but my least favorite was the conflict that I still say today. Um, exists for all uh, women in a leading role who are um, raising children by themselves at home, which I was. Um, that was uh, a very, very difficult conflict. 
uh, I, I'm afraid I may have brought that onto the set a few times, but um, I tried not to. But it was ongoing for seven years because those were their formative years. Yeah. They were 10 and 11 when I got the role. Yeah. And uh, they missed me. To this day, they've not once seen it. Wow. 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 And I couldn't ask hey, that of them. Mm -mm. Would anything have made it easier? Like, could they have accommodated mm -hmm. you in some way? If I quit? That's it? I mean, so not Kids like are tough. Kids are tough. They want their mother. They don't care. They don't understand that. They did not understand that. And I honestly didn't expect them to, especially with two boys. Um, but uh, that's the way it goes. I wish I'd been a little clearer as a mother about my own passion instead of allowing the guilt to sort of override it. Because if you're clear and you say, this is what I love and this is what I'm going to do, kids, and I hope one day you have the same passion, uh, yeah. it might've been easier. But anyway, those that's my, my best and my least. Yeah. So interesting. Do you want to show that video? Um, well, hold on. Well, I know that um, one of the questions, actually, speaking of, of uh, women and role models, was for you, Roxanne, about about you being a really amazing role model for women in the sciences. It's like what ranks, and also, you, like you were saying, you went on for to directing, right? It's amazing. What were yeah. some of your most memorable directing experiences? Uh well, that isn't where I thought that question was going. That's so funny. Um, <laughs> I was all getting ready to answer that other question. Right. Where I thought. All right. Um, uh, well, I just had I just had an uh, enormous amount of wonderful directing experiences. Starting at Star Trek, the first uh, show that I, the first episode I did there called Riddles, uh, where Tim Russ was the lead in that, and I, I adored it. But I've had many others. Up until like right now, uh, Penny Dreadful City of Angels, which is airing right now, which is a John Logan um, show, which you know he's got a Moulin Rouge on Broadway. He did until the virus. Um, but uh, John Logan uh, wrote this and uh, he's a Broadway babe and it's kind of fun to incorporate or to actually you know, be with somebody who understands uh, script and language. And, uh, but uh, that's airing right now. And that's been, that was a, exciting, exciting experience. And there've been so many in between. So um, it'd be, I'd be hard pressed to, um, to, to, pick, you know, to pick any more. Well, I, you know, I think also, I think this may be where you thought it was, my question was going and I, and I combined the questions, which was my, my, my close, co my cousin, I'm really close to Janet who lives in Wisconsin. She and her husband, Jason are truckies. Hey, Jason. Hey, Janet. And, and she talked, we talked right before the show. And she was like, you got to talk to Roxanne and tell her what a role model she was in in regards to your character and and dealing with depression and mental health and mental health in general. Part Vulcan and dealing with your journey. Do you feel I mean, that? Half did people reach out? To, yeah, sorry. Did people reach out to you about that? Uh, that mostly about that. Yeah, and that's but that actually has been uh, like one of the best things about about that, and the fact that the writers kind of let me go there with with this character and to really explore what that was and um, and how so often we as people do not feel like we belong in one place or another, but that we're split, you know, and that we, uh, it's just, it's a, it was a wonderful, um, they really wrote for me very well. And I was very happy with the way they took the character. Uh, but yes, depression, mental health, those issues, I think were dealt with beautifully. Um, Yes, and yeah, a lot, there are a lot of people that have approached me about about that on a very personal level, like what you said, Garrett, about really affecting them and their lives, and that is mm -hmm. tremendously um, rewarding. Yes. Wow. Yes. It's funny you're mentioning yeah. Broadway because both you and Robbie yeah. have a whole Broadway background. Robbie, you did the National Tour of Into the Woods, didn't you? Yeah, I did. I did the first national tour of Into the Woods, and um, did, did that with Cleo Lane and um, and and Ray Gill, who's passed away. I don't know. And if you Charlotte know. Ray. Did you know Ray? No, but it's Charlotte Ray. I was oh, and Char her. Charlotte Ray played my mother. Yes, it was wonderful. It was so exciting. I got to work with Stephen Sondheim, who I had grown up, you know, just. Um, a huge fan and, and admiring Stephen. And uh, so I did the first national tour. I had not been on Broadway at that point. And when I came back, they, they asked me if I would take over for uh, Ben, um, Ben, yes, the, the, original the, original, Jack. the original Jack. They asked me if I'd take over. And I said, yes, my first Broadway show. I was so excited. And then they told me what, that it was scale. 
And I was like, what? I just got off the road. I was making like a lot more money on the road. And so I ended up not doing the the Broadway company because I just, I was like, I, I, anyway, but I ended up on Broadway a, a couple of years later with uh, six degrees of separation in the, in the original cast of that show. So um, that, which I, was amazing. I found this clip of you and I was like, Oh God. I was, I was, like, <laughs> and I was like, was Robbie like a 10 year old boy? <laughs> I think he's like four feet tall. Here, take a look. Let's see. What do you got? Here we go. I got, really, I got tricked. Here, watch. Please. 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 Oh my God! <laughs> oh my God! <laughs> Nothing has changed. Oh my God! That's Nothing awesome. has changed. That is so awesome. I didn't know That's you were so moving. I know you were moving. I thought you were just really short, and then you got up. I was like, "The hell!" Very <laughs> cool. Yeah, I was. I was milking the cow, Seth. I had to try to milk Milky White, and there was yeah. no milk, so we had to go sell it, and then the giant and. You know, I, I'm, I'm aware of the plot. Robbie. Thank you. <laughs> wait, wait a second. I, I just realized as I was logging on to this, I have this little trinket of my very first Broadway show that I saw in New York. This is, do you remember these, these old? Yes. I had that. I did. I had that on my yeah, card. Of it's, it's oh. like the Broadway, it's the Broadway souvenir. So this yeah. is uh, Annie. That was the first Broadway show oh. I ever saw. Oh my oh, god. god! Look at that. will come out. Like a, the the big sure. Yeah, I don't know if they make these anymore, but I keep it on my desk. I don't think they do. Oh, it, isn't that so amazing? Early 80s. And then Roxanne. <laughs> <laughs> What's up with your full chorus line background? I'm obsessed that you got to do that show. What's it the most amazing thing you've ever done in your life? Out, you know, outside of Voyager? Yeah. <laughs> very, very sweet. Yeah, no, it, it was. It was my first job right out of um, college. I graduated from Berkeley. I went to an open audition, wow. lied to my employer. I was working at San Francisco Ballet and I lied. I was a receptionist and they saw me on TV auditioning. They fired me. The next day I got fired and then Herb Kane wrote an article about me because San Francisco Ballet was now using me as sort of to say, oh, look at our receptionist, it's now in course line. So I, three days ago, I moved to New York and the rest is history. <laughs> Wait, they fired you, but then they lauded you in an article? Yes. <laughs> I said I had food poisoning and they got the call that said, well, you obviously didn't have food poisoning. We just saw you on TV auditioning. Oh. And so at the news, on the news, you know, so uh, I was fired. And, uh, but then I was hired. So it was, uh, it was an interesting, yeah. But it was great. I mean, and no, I treasure that. I treasure that period of time, like gold I, in my life. I have a question. I have a question for Roxanne. How long were you, did you play that role? I did it in the early 80s. I first started on the road and then took over Deanna on Broadway for quite a few years. And I left and did theater, came back. And then I went back to close the show in 1990, uh, April 28th, 1990, I was the last uh, Morales. So you the last wow. I did that. Wow. Yeah. And that's she yeah. was the last Morales, meaning that she was featured on the Phil Donahue show, sounding amazing. And I think you sounded something like this. Kiss today, goodbye. The sweetness and the sorrow. Wish me luck. The same to you, but I can't regret what I did for love, what I did for love. Wow. wow. <laughs> that gave me goosebumps. Oh, oh my God. Great. Oh my God. <laughs> Oh, it's great. Roxanne, that's so crazy. Literally five years, only there was only five years before you did Voyager. Wow. Is that right? Yeah. Wow. Was it? Oh, I don't know. 
Well, I, I may have lied about my age on one of those things. Oh, that was a flash from the past. Oh my that was great. <laughs> So exciting. All right. We got our second half, but hang out because maybe we could bring you guys in and out. You guys okay, are so we'll hang. terrible. You guys are so fun. I want you to reboot and write roles for some middle aged gay people. All right. Um, <laughs> we're available. Okay. So we're going to bring you back in a moment. So Kay uh, came back. Yeah, we're Dan, bring you back. Jack from Into the Woods. Bye, Lovely Garrett. Garrett. Okay. And now we have our medical break. Actually, we should bring on and as one of his good friends, we have That's Dr. Right. John LaPook. And his good friend, Bob Cardo. Oh, take off your on mute, Bob. Bob, okay. how are you? I am well, doctor. It's a pleasure to see you again. For the Star Trek fans who do not know, Dr. John LaPook and I were classmates at Yale, even though he looks far younger and is a silver fox. <laughs> we, we were at Yale the same time, and for a brief period of time, we were both biology majors. Obviously, that panned out for you. And we were both in a singing group called the SOBs, the Society of Orpheus and Bacchus. And that is uh, right. Bob had an amazing voice back then. And still, I, I remember your opera uh, for uh, when, when something died in, in the astral, in the, in the atmosphere. Uh, por, por, I want to say uh, uh, Porcini could, could. Oh, yes. I have. I sang opera on Voyager about six different episodes. So I don't right. know exactly which but there one was you're one thing that you did when you there was some star that burned out and you were saying goodbye to it. Oh gosh, yes, of course. Uh, this this was just on my own when the uh, the uh, um, NASA's Cassini mission Cassini close ended to and mission. the spacecraft was, <laughs> was yes it. that is the most viewed performance I've ever done on the internet. It is uh, it, I've never gone viral before or since, and I'm sure it won't happen again. But uh, anyway, yes, that was my tribute my opera tribute to the NASA's Cassini mission. Thank you. I have to give a little shout out to Seth and to Kate and to Bob. And these things don't get just produced by themselves. And I'm seeing these old clips come in and out. And you guys, from the very beginning, how, what episode is this? The Zillion? I think every, 115, 116, something Every like. day you're doing this and you're not doing it, you know, you're doing it for, for love, what you did for love. Yeah, so, no, I can't. I couldn't agree more. Those clips that you got of my uh, my colleagues, Robert Duncan McNeil and Roxanne, were just superb. And uh, 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 and, uh, and I'm sure the Star Trek fans are completely uh, enamored <laughs> with the fact that you guys went to all that effort to dig that up because that is your, you know, that's your turf. That's your area of expertise. And to, and, uh -huh. and to do that, I, I'm sure, meant a lot to the hardcore Star Trek fan. Well, they're Aww. so talented, those guys. And by the way, Bob, you were with John 35 years ago today because hello, happy anniversary, John and Kate. It's your wedding anniversary. <laughs> oh my God, I did yeah. Yes, I was at your wedding. Congratulations. Yes. What, a, what a memorable event that was. And congratulations to your dear wife. Yeah, yeah. It's like we're, we're, you know, the greatest miracle. You, you meet the right person. And then another few miracles with your kids. <laughs> And a few more miracles with your friends. <laughs> <laughs> and then you, and you keep your hair, a few more miracles like that. <laughs> we want to show this great clip that you and John did on CBS. This is for all the Star Trek, all the Star Trek fans. But it turns out basically everything that's happened on Star Trek has basically happened in real life. So here's a clip all about that. This is Dr. John LaPook and Bob's on the stage. Four. Star Trek predicted the way you would scan someone is through a non-invasive way without really touching them. Star Trek's tricorder? Today we have CT scan, MRI, and ultrasound. What else has come true? Where Captain Kirk would talk to someone on the flat screen TV, I can talk to a patient now, see their image, see their scans remotely. Dr. McCoy's hypospray helped inspire needle-free injectors. The visor that let Geordi see? We now have glasses that beam light to a chip implanted in the retina. What about sick bay? They'd get on the bed and all of a sudden all the monitors would go on like the monitors we have here. And that has come true. We have wireless telemetry. We got a sneak preview into modern medicine from this Starship sick bay. But at the end of the day, Star Trek was about a lot more than just fancy gadgets. It foresaw a world of inclusiveness with doctors of color, male and female. And in the new series, Star Trek Discovery, a physician who is openly gay. What were we doing in a nebula? No, wait, don't tell me. We consulted a specialist in Star Trek-style medicine. Bob Picardo played the emergency medical hologram on the Voyager series. 
And then I would appear and I would say, please state the nature of the medical emergency. So do you think that eventually in the future, a computer algorithm could entirely replace a physician? Ultimately, that artificial intelligence physician will be created from the personal experiences of a large group of doctors. So yes, I believe the day will come when you will be obsolete. Until we reach that final frontier. Computer, end program. I remain Dr. John LaPook, CBS News, New York. <laughs> You know what I love what I loved about that is it made the turn. There were the gadgets, the gizmos, but really I think what the fans will agree, what set uh, Star Trek apart from everything else, and this was Gene Roddenberry and the other people, was the inclusiveness, the fact that you're seeing, you know, a, a, everything from a, a gay doctor to every color under the sun to you name it. Uh, they had episodes you know, where it was crazy that one person was half white and half black and hated the other person who was half white and half black the other way. And themes of inclusiveness. I, I don't remember, I was, you know, I like Twilight Zone. I like a lot of those shows, but this really just nailed that whole theme. And I think that's what set it apart. Uh, well said. Good. I could not agree more with the doctor's, um, you know, uh, prognosis. Diagnosis. <laughs> Diagnosis, sorry. Diagnosis. Your pro prognosis, I'm, I'm, I'm still weighing on. <laughs> <laughs> We've got so many Trekkie fans watching, but I just want to say, since we have such a big audience, Dr. LaPook, anything you want to say about wearing masks? Should we stop because the virus has really gone down a lot? What do you want to say about that to no, the fans? No, we just keep saying, folks, wear the mask. You know, we still have a lot of states where it's increasing. You have to do the social distancing. You have to wear the mask. You have to care about the next person. Uh, and I know it's hard. We're getting mixed signals from everywhere. But when you go outside, wear that mask if you're going to be around anybody anywhere close. Uh, just keep following. I think I'm going to have something about it this Sunday on CBS Sunday morning. We're thinking about doing another piece about it. So. Yes, please. All right. Well, thank you. Always Thanks, great Dr. having you, Dr. John LaCook. Peace out. We're going to see you soon. I'm sure by you. I love yes. you. <laughs> Bye. So he's giving the okay. Hold on, he's giving the finger there. <laughs> I'm giving the finger. Giving me the finger. He's giving. <laughs> I know. Sorry. <laughs> Jeez, uh, oh that my is known God. as the Vulcan salute. Yeah. So rude on my part. Okay. Okay. Now part two. Yeah. By, by the way, guys, we are doing virus talk. It, someone's like, it's escape time. It's not. The point of the show is to have medical correspondent. That's always been part of the show. Is that we have chief medical correspondent to really help with the virus. We've always been talking about and it. And I'm so. sure that Captain Janeway would agree. Yes, let's, in so, fact, let's bring her on right now and ask her. Okay, you bring it's on everybody. Kate I'm Mulgrew. Gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna accompany oh, you're gonna do the company. Yes, well, we'll ask you her that question. Them. All right, we're gonna bring on we're Kate Mulgrew two. again for part two. Hello? Hey. Hello. And we have Bob Picardo. We're gonna bring on Ethan Phillips. Where's Ethan? Hi, Ethan. Hi, hey, How are you? Ryan. Hi. Hi, Gary. How are you Kim. Hi. Hello, Hi, guys. Hello, guys. Kimbo. <laughs> the best. <Yeah. laughs> I got to answer the question the last time, so I love the people that didn't but answer Hold on, hold on. Because I, I want to, I want to ask, because there have been a couple of people commenting. Captain Jane, what would Captain Janeway say oh, yeah. if this were, if this were going on? Right now, if this pandemic were going on right now, I would certainly ab abide by what science well, dictates. Thank you. To the rule, I mean, to thank the you. letter. That would be wearing the mask at all times, wearing the gloves when you should, keeping the social distance of at least six feet, and staying in as much as you possibly can. I'm in Virginia now, and I see that it's every other person. It's an absolute 50-50 thing. I said to a guy in the elevator, nice looking, tall guy, about 40 years old. I said, why are you not wearing your mask and your gloves? We're within two feet of each other. He said, you sound like a Democrat. I said, great. Here's my floor. I'm out. <laughs> you know, there's. I think that there is a political of it all going on. How is science political? All right, the point that's is- why I, That's why I said, what would Captain Janeway say? And it would be yeah. Like, yeah, that's right. And I agree. Yeah. Preach it. Hey. <laughs> right, Broadway so baby six, okay. Yeah. So, <laughs> so Kate already answered this, but I love this question that somebody asked. What did you like the most about your character? And what did you like the least on Star Trek Voyager? <laughs> <laughs> Who are you asking? Oh. 
Yeah, ask Seth. I'll ask Bob first because he, he was here at the very beginning and didn't answer. All right. Um, uh, first of all, I'm the one who uh, who posited that question. That was the, my backup question. I said that always works. So I take credit for that. <laughs> However, I, I may have posited the question. I didn't come up with an answer. That's the sad part. Um, I, I think that uh, my least favorite thing about the character was playing him early on when he had absolutely no affect whatsoever. He mm. was a blank slate. He was a new piece of yeah. technology. He was colorless and humorless and dull as could be. Yeah. But the great thing about the concept of the character was that he was a piece of technology that had a that was willful, that had kind of a bad attitude because he felt he wasn't being respected. And once I uh, hooked into that <clears throat> understanding and earned the respect of my fellow crew members by always trying to do more than I was intended to do, uh, he, his personality grew over the course of the seven years. So that, um, so my least favorite thing became my most favorite thing. And then to expand quickly on what um, both uh, Kate said and what Garrett said, the wonderful thing that Star Trek means so much to, to the devoted audience member who's watched it over all the various incarnations of uh, all the different series. And that's very meaningful to me, that, that, that it means something to people during their lives and that it's been so inspirational to the real people of mm -hmm. science and exploration. So many astronauts that I have met over the years say that they watched Star Trek as a kid and that wow. science fiction and other uh, like Star Trek has inspired them to pursue their careers in exploration, in engineering, in space, in planetary science, whatever. So that is really, really gratifying from the perspective of an actor who is a science lover and a, and a science uh, major right. in the past. Right. right. Hey, hey, I'm sorry, Bob, I sent you donations. We wanna make sure everyone, right. we, we Remind gotta everyone just te there. check your phone and just text you donations. For those who are coming in and joining us a little bit late, what this are raising is, money this for? is, this is uh, we're raising money for yeah. the Actors Fund, which helps everyone in the performing arts um, for their rent, to their utility bills, to their food, to their insurance premiums. A lot of people in the arts, they get their insurance based on number of weeks. And so their weeks or their days that they've worked on set, they're not gonna necessarily be working and they're gonna lose their insurance. That's the big worry in New York and around the country. Is All right. Can I say some thank yous? All right, from Kira in New York, $25. Thank you so much for hosting this virtual Voyager Cast reunion panel. That's for Seth and James. Sandy from North Carolina. $36. Matthew from New Jersey, $51. Alexis from mm. South Carolina, $25. Anna from Illinois, $25. Naomi from California, $5. Neville from California, $10. Aaron from Georgia, $5. Sheila from Oklahoma, $75. Rachel's from Australia, $10. And she's watching from Australia while she should be working. <laughs> and I, just want, I want to say that historically, and all of my, I, my colleagues will agree, I'm sure, the Star Trek fans have always stepped forward to support the causes that we say, hey, this is what's important yes. to us. Have a look at this. They yeah. always step forward and have a look at it, and they support it, and we are deeply grateful for that. We are indeed. We are indeed. indeed. Thank, you. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Bob. Uh, That's Tim, a trademark. What That's about a you? Oh, yeah, go ahead, Gil. Okay. That is a trademark of the of the Star Trek fan, of the Voyager fan. Generosity of spirit and pocket <clears throat> when it matters to us. Yeah. I've seen yeah. that for the last 25 years. It's quite astounding. Yeah. I'm very, yeah. very grateful. We had a lot very of fans coming out for this. So Tim, what about you? What did you like most about your character? What did you like the least? As posited by Bob Picardo. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I would say, uh, what, what I liked most about playing the character was the fact that I was, you know, I, I was able to, I was, was able to be the foil for the the human condition on the uh, in terms of the interaction with people and and their emotions. And I, I always enjoyed being able to do that uh, because his character, the way he is, the, is, is sort of flat and dry. As, as Bob likes to say, uh, um, I have to play King Lear with an eyebrow, more or less. Um, I like what I didn't like as much, on, which is almost related to that, was as an actor, I would have. Been, I missed being able to to be able to show a range of emotions, as it were, uh, when you train as an actor, uh, as my colleagues will tell you, you're training to show a range of emotions for years and years. And then I end up playing this role for seven years where I don't show any. So it was nice to get out of the box once in a while. And uh, that was the one thing that, that I, that I uh, you know, I, I, that I, I could say I didn't like anything at all. It was just that. <laughs> Doesn't sound too bad. <laughs> I'd love to be emotional. 
Being Jewish, I have too many emotions. Jerry, what about you, dear? <laughs> um, the corset wasn't an enormous, a lot of fun. Um, not being able to go to the bathroom without the entire crew knowing it and having a production shut down, that was a bit of a you know, downside. <laughs> God, um, how long did it take for you to gear up for the bath to gear out for the bathroom? If I had to go, which everyone was on the radio chair, is going ten one. That's twenty because it was you know I had to have somebody dress me and undress me, and it was it was a twenty minute thing to get me undressed, go to the bathroom, get dressed, get back to set. It was a did thing. You, think, you never thought of having like a special Star Trek diaper? <laughs> wow. I mean, that's a little tight. I don't know if you noticed that. wasn't a lot of room. For it showed up with fancy lines. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I actually got so sick my first season on the show because I felt so bad that it was a production shutdown. So I would just not drink oh. all day, and I got really mm. ill. It's not a good thing to do. I got dehydrated. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Uh, my favorite thing of the character. I mean, it was a. She was a. She was a gift to play as an actor and continues to be now um, on the card. Oh. She's, there was so much growth because she started out not even human. So um, so that was wonderful. So and it's kind of, sorry, what? See, it's almost the opposite of Tim where you had such a range that you got to play, whereas Tim had to be blank. She was very reserved and sort of Vulcan-esque in a lot of, especially in the beginning when she didn't, she wasn't comfortable expressing emotion. She had never experienced it as a Borg. She didn't understand it. She didn't, wasn't comfortable with it. So um, Seven and Tuvok kind of bonded over that kind of stuff very similarly. <laughs> I remember Tim and I being concerned and we would have scenes together because our vocal inflections were kind of identical. <laughs> and it's like, oh, this is gonna be a really, really flippant, exciting scene. <laughs> Great. But actually they ended up being fun characters to sort of play against. Yeah. And Ethan, what about you? What did you like most? What did you like about it least? I just, I was laughing because of uh, Jerry talking about how tight her costume was. You know, that costume <laughs> was a derma regenerating suit. It was to make her skin uh, heal. And I always used to say to her, she remembers, I say, Jerry, let's see if it worked. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you little devil. That? You little <laughs> devil. <laughs> Um, uh, <laughs> uh, I guess what I least liked about my character was the makeup, which was uh, difficult. But um, I liked that he had a big heart, and uh, he wore it on his sleeve, and that's uh, rare. And uh, I, I embraced that, and I, I thought that was kind of lovely. And um, I liked Neelix a lot. I thought he was a good fellow. Can I say something about Ethan? This yeah. man, his makeup was insane. Like, I think there was what your bottom lip exposed. That's it. His nose is covered. His chin is covered. His My entire tongue was face. actually not covered. The, well, your tongue was free. The, you know, the big content. It was a miserable, miserable head of makeup to be wearing. And he never complained. I was there for four years. I never heard this man complain. <laughs> I would like to not only attest to that, but to go you one more. In the seven years I worked with this man, John Ethan Phillips, he was the essence of equilibrium and grace. Yes. You were the soul for me. Yeah. Thank you, sweetheart. Thank yeah. you very much. I, I think he was a huge pain in the ass. So I did. Yeah. <laughs> um, I stuck at that. I, stuck at I also pain resent the fact, I know. I resent the fact that, he, that he looks like me, too. That bugs me. You know, if you, if, if you leave me in, in the dryer for five extra minutes, he looks exactly like that. I right, speak. Right. <laughs> you have a question for you. This is from Chris Lalonda. Dear Mr. Picardo, I'm a huge fan. I was wondering, since the last episode was the time traveling episode, was your name assumed to be Joe, like in the finale, or was this never meant to be? What name do you suggest or like the character? Well, uh, I, I never suggested that name. Um, I think the joke over the seven years was that my character, once given by his captain the freedom to select his name, he couldn't make up his mind. So the notion that he was an indecisive computer program was supposed to be funny, I think, to people in technology. Um, the fact that they named me Joe was a personal joke to me because every male in my family other than me was named Joe. <laughs> All of my uncles, my father, my brother, Joe is the most popular name in my family. So I- Did they know that? Yep, no, they did not know that, but it, but it, it, was, uh, it tickled me enormously. Wow. Oh my gosh. I just want to show you that people are watching all over the world. I love this comment. Um, 
is from Slavin watching Voyager while in lockdown in Ireland. Yeah, it's Ireland. Yeah, hey. we'll yes. Yeah, people are just watching everywhere. So, hey, Jen. Uh, I mean, Jerry. There's a question from Jen, and she said, "How has it been to revisit your Seven of Nine character in Star Star Trek: Picard?" It's it's been amazing. It's not certainly not something that I ever thought was going to be happening by any stretch of the imagination. Um, but I love how they've written her. I love how she's developed. I love, I mean, she's been through a lot of crap and she mm -hmm. keeps going and I love her resiliency and her guts. And I love that she's trying and struggling. And uh, I just think she's awesome. She's may really I ask, fun to play. May I ask Jerry a question? <laughs> yes. Yes, I don't Kate. know. I don't know if you have the answer to it, but what's what's the plan now going forward? Nobody We're knows anything. Waiting to see. I mean, season two was picked up before season one aired, and yeah. we're just in a holding pattern. If we we were originally supposed to start shooting the middle of June, but they would have had to have started building the sets um, the beginning of May to do that, which we can't do. So we're just waiting. waiting. I see. They're hoping that we can start shooting in the fall. I don't. I don't know. You know, we always, when we talk to sitcom people, we always kind of know the way sitcoms are done. But were you like, would you have read throughs at the beginning of the week, like sit around and read the script? Or would you just show up for your scenes? Like, what was the typical mm -hmm. week for the Voyager? In Voyager? On Voyager? We never had table reads. We never had table reads, no. ever. No. Never. Sometimes, sometimes you didn't have a script. Sorry. <laughs> sometimes? <laughs> Frequently. <laughs> How is that possible? Everything is so meticulously connected. What, you, what would you get the script? At places? Well, yeah, no. A couple of, no, couple no, of shows no. don't even have a cameraman. The script, the, script <laughs> was, the script would be under is under might not have been under a, a full revise yet. Not, we might not have gotten the actual like the final part of the last act or something because they were working on it to make sure it was tight. I mean, they're not going to put anything on the screen. That's that didn't tight. happen very often, as I recall, did it? No, I think it was it maybe was originally really, it, got pages like one, rewrites for the was, scenes that day that morning. Yeah, one yeah. season I think was a little bit slow, and the rest of them were fine, but. But but we don't typically on on uh, hour long shows. There's mm. been a couple that I've worked on that they had a table read during a lunch hour of one of the days, mm. but we never had one ever had a table read. Well, did we ever get an hour long lunch hour? Not barely that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I don't think so. Oh, yeah. wasn't eating, so it didn't matter or drinking. <laughs> um, let me ask. You got to just prevent all digestion. Who was sort of the biggest cut up on this set? Was there someone that was always cracking jokes, like ripping off their oh mask? Oh my god. That's all these guys. Phillips. Yeah, well, probably we Phillips. We all, Phillips. Uh, everybody had a sense of humor, I think. I, I may have been a little over the top, but- uh, A little? <laughs> also, yeah, Robert, but... Bel Robert Beltran is the most amazing mimic. He does incredible impressions of many, many actors. So he right. was, and when, he was and, constantly hilarious. And Roberto, yeah. when did that start? When did that nonsense usually really get going, huh? Uh, and at yeah. whose expense did that get going? <laughs> Let's, well, let's just go back in time. You're a Roman Catholic. It cannot it lie. Usually, when did that usually start? Well, it usually, ha I don't understand how it has to do with my Catholicism, but I won't lie. <laughs> um, I understand it happened late on the bridge, but remember, I wasn't, my character couldn't be on the bridge for the first three years. Uh -huh. um, and it also happened in the briefing room. I think that's where people completely fell apart. It was terrible. Terrible. The briefing room was ugly. That was, that, was, that, was, that was merciless, the briefing room, just merciless. This, this means nothing to our hosts, but there were certain sets that almost, <sighs> it was almost like in the air that people screwed around. <clears throat> and and the later it got, the more they screwed around. Yeah. Wait, what, did you guys like ever pull literal pranks on each other? Like shove something down the Star Trek outfits? Like uh, ice uh, Tim, I, I, Tim, I think you should Seth. tell are, them. Are you, are, do you mean that in seriousness? Are yes, you, what, what? what? Did you pull pranks? They pulled a seven-year prank on me. <laughs> Tim Russ, don't you dare. Don't you uh, dare. What, what? Oh, In Tim, his bathroom behind story. his console. Tell the story. Yes, Robert I might have. Beltran mimicking. I, I you were all have. outrageous. And, at my, and that's when my close-up, usually at 1 o'clock in the morning <laughs> on a Saturday, that's when they'd start. Uh, yeah, and, of course, I'm a terrible corpser, so I'd sob laughing at you fools. I'm yeah, I may have that. gone. I may have gone to the wardrobe uh, person, Matt uh, Hawking. He was great uh, and very creative with his hands. Um, he 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 helped me out once uh, with a pair of shorts uh, when I was supposed to expose myself to the crew on the bridge. Um, they were on camera and I was off camera, of course. And 
he allowed he uh, he allowed me to to look more endowed than I would normally look, and and I exposed myself to them, and I got them to I got them to crack after about five seconds, and I think they used at least the first three seconds of that shot. So. <laughs> <laughs> yes, just to make it absolutely clear for the audience members, they had stuffed a long black knee sock and attached it strategically to Mr. Russ's nether region. So when he took his robe off, it unfolded. <laughs> just, just to make that perfectly clear. Right. Very, very few people do not know that the costume people modeled that on me. <laughs> Jim, I don't even know if you knew that. But I got to approve it, Johnny. Oh, okay. I approved that costume. <laughs> <laughs> Seth and James have nothing more to ask us. <laughs> oh my God. I'm going to stop the show right there. They're just <laughs> horrified. They're just in shock. I want to show Bob from his, from back in the day. So this, oh. So this is Bob. Yes. So Bob, you began as a Broadway actor. So many Broadway credits here. Yes, right. And you were on this commercial Ooh. that I spent my entire childhood watching. For Gemini, you were playing like a twenty-one-year-old, like a Harvard graduate. Yeah, Bob, when when yes. when you sent the when you sent the uh, you said you were in Gemini, I you, I think you sent the email like at one o'clock in the morning, like and you were like, from the commercial. He was going like, crazy; he couldn't believe it. He's from Texas. Up with it. So I he didn't know. Yeah. It was the first major Broadway commercial. Danny Aiello, who played my father in the show, narrates it. I play the lead in the play. If you come to see it, and I'm the only person who doesn't speak in the commercial. <laughs> but uh, I was 23 years old at the time, playing 21. So I was playing younger. You're standing. You're standing at the end of the commercial with Danny Aiello, right? Could yep, that's me. Him? That's me with my hands in my birthday cake, being petulant. Yes. God bless you. Everybody watch this commercial. We, everyone in New York knows this commercial. <laughs> I invited to my son's 21st birthday party. Good food. Good people. Our neighbor Bonnie. <laughs> Am I weird? Yeah. But see, your son hurts. Take human bites. My honey, Lucille. I'm not hungry. I'll just pick. My son's friend from Harvard and his lovely oh, sister. Honey, you. Happy birthday. And a guest of honor, my Ivy League son. It's going to be some party. Gemini on Broadway at the Little Theater. It's a smash. <laughs> wow. Gemini is the fourth <laughs> longest running uh, non musical in the history of Broadway. It was, I, a, and no one has ever heard of it anymore. But thank you oh, for that. Broadway people have got mm -hmm. a huge hit. Okay, we have so many more specific questions, but we also have to wrap up because wait, I want to make sure I answer. I ask all the specific questions. Oh, yes, questions. right. So hold on here. You've gotten so many fan questions, I feel completely overwhelmed. <laughs> oh, this I love this. Are there okay. any rituals or I this is from Nick Blackmore? Are there any rituals? <laughs> what was that? That's my ride. <laughs> That's my window. Sorry, guys. Let's What's Any the question? Any items that you carry that you carry on you or that you do before performing? Oh no, no items. Uh... Oh, like a lucky thing, or like a ritual. Like I always go over my lines, or like I always kiss this thing, or we always shake hands. Hmm. No, no, we're much. really boring. You know the yeah, whole yeah, thing, sorry. Seth and James. The yes. whole thing of acting is nothing but superstition. That's why it's so magical. That's why it's so edgy. That's yeah. why it's so great. And that's why the Actors Fund is so crucial and uh -huh. everybody donating tonight. That's right. It, yeah. it, we've got to carry on, guys, yeah. so that we can have our superstitions, share them with you as an audience. And this is part of the, the marvel of life yeah. and the greatness. So Thanks well. for having us. Oh, thank you, Kate. Kate, you're amazing. Jerry Ryan, I have a question for you. Mm -hmm. How long did it take to go to the bath? No, just kidding. Um, <laughs> what was it like transitioning through personalities? Your performance in that episode was phenomenal. Oh, thank you. Um, that was really fun. I mean, that was a really fun episode because, as Tim said, you know, when you're kind of playing a character that all the emotions are, well, he didn't have them, but mine were just suppressed. It was really fun to have the episodes where you got to sort of break out and do all kinds of things. And that was... Um, I think I was a Ferengi and a Klingon and a little girl and a, like all different kinds of things. It was really fun. I mean, it was it was a it was a really fun challenge. That that question, by the way, is from Molly Nelson. <laughs> well, I have a, a question for Kate from John. <clears throat> is there anything about Captain Janeway that you would do differently looking back at the series? Oh no, question. <clears throat> a lot. I mean, it's it, it, it's too great uh, to 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 explore right now, except to say that I would. 
certainly go back and redo the first season and endow that language, which was diabolically difficult, with real meaning. I mean, um, we were, I was terribly under the gun. Those were very long days. And I was mm -hmm. shot out of a veritable cannon. I didn't know what I was doing. And had I had the license, or had I had the guts to just sort of uh, endow her <clears throat> more completely with knowledge of what she was saying, I would have, I think, felt steadier on my feet. Mm -hmm. But it happened quickly. It happened quickly enough. Yes, it did. <clears throat> wow. So you guys, you fully memorized scripts. You didn't have like... Saturday Night Live people with cue cards over the side or anything. Right? Absolutely not. No. Are you kidding? No, no. Do you guys remember like the hardest line you had to say where it was like really technical and annoying? How about a whole page or two pages of a monologue <laughs> where you carry the camera from one person to the next? And at the very end, you put your fingers on the window and they call cut and they say, Kate, there's no window in space. You can't put your fingers there. <laughs> Do you, you remember that, you guys, in the briefing room? Yes. I remember that. Oh my God, agony! Yeah, agony. Or, or the candle, the candle in the background is out of focus. We got to do that all over yeah, again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hair in the gate. Remember hair in the gate. Hair in the yeah, gate. Yeah. Yes. Hair in the gate. Hair in the Those gate. are fun. Hey, Bob, I sent you one more set of donations and then we have to sort of do our little finale. We have to, you guys, there's so much to talk about. We have to have you on for a second Voyager reunion. All right, it's Bob, Bob, read the donations. Oh, yes, I'm sorry. Uh, you didn't tell me in enough time. All right, if somebody else ask a question, give me 10 seconds. All right, uh, here we go. All right, um, here we go. All right. Um, how... <laughs> Halsborn from Ireland, $51. Ashley from Virginia, $15. Tom from North Carolina, $75. Roxanne from California, $51. Ian, Whoa. $25. He's the biggest Voyager fan, according to Ian. Clara from California, $10. Tay from Washington, $10. Michael from Massachusetts, $50. Mike and Jerry in Pittsburgh, $25. Andrew from California, $25. $25. So thank you all. You thank guys you are guys. absolutely Yay. great. And thanks nice. to my colleagues who jumped on this and said they wanted to do it in a second because they know it's important. The Actors Fund since 1872 has been okay. taking part, uh, taking care of people of all stripes in the performing arts and the supporting businesses around the, uh, the performing arts. So, right. so thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you for organizing it. Thank you, Stephanie. Thank you, guys. It's all good. Thank you all. I beg for some music. I love you. Don't say goodbye just yet. Don't say goodbye just to you, Tim. I beg for music, and Tim told me that he was in. He was in Dream Girls, and I begged him to haul out a song from the past. So. Tim, people are going to be shocked what a great voice you have. So you got to hit it for everybody. Grab the guitar, Tim. Not a guitar. Come on, uh, Come one on verse, love. One verse, gonna... one chorus. <laughs> that one is you cheapskate. Okay, fine. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. Join us. Leave your fields to flower. Join us. Leave your cheese to sour. Join us. Come and waste an hour or two. Doodly doo doo. Journey. Journey to a spot exciting, mystic, and exotic. Journey through our anecdotic review. We got magic to do. <laughs> For you, we got miracle plays to play. We got parts to perform, hearts to wrong, kings and things to take by storm as we go along our way. <laughs> All right. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Good. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, you're all so great. So we're gonna say goodbye to you. you. We really do want you to come back. You're so great. So Tim, 
excellent on the singing. Thank you Thank so you. much. Thank you, Tim. I'm going to say peace out to you. Um, I want to make sure I say goodbye to everybody. That's right. Kate Mulgrew, you're so well spoken. You are the captain of real life, too. Thank you. I thank you. Guys, you. Thank, you thank you all. Goodbye, colleagues. Goodbye, goodbye Seth James. Bye. Goodbye, actors everywhere. Bye, God bless. Bye. We love it. Garrett, I love you. Look like you're in a, a studio from 1920s that was modernized to the 2000s. Like, it's the coolest with, like, what's happening? Where are you? <laughs> <laughs> It's true. In the words, in the words of George D. K. Oh my! Um, <laughs> it's just a green screen, just a green screen behind me. That's all. So, <laughs> you got it going on. <laughs> Thank you so much. I had a blast. Roxanne Dawson, do you still remember your lyrics? <laughs> <laughs> nothing. No, I remember nothing. Lovely Roxanne, goodbye, you. lovely Garrett. Bye. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye. Bye, <laughs> Bye Robert. I'll play some music. I'll call you guys out. Bye, Robert. Bye, Ethan. Bye, 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 Thank you.